Hi, I'm Margaret Stevens with MargaretStevens.org. So today's topic is going to be a talk. It's going to be about why I talk about money so much on my site. One of the things I've noticed is that a lot of the couples I talk to, they don't really talk about money in general. They don't, you know, do anything more than, hey, how are we going to segment our bills? You know, I pay this much, you pay this much, we have this much in our joint account, and that's kind of it. One of the reasons why I love talking about money so much, and especially how it relates to marriage, is because it's one of the building blocks of a marriage. And here's what I mean before I start getting a bunch of hate commenters or hate spam. When you both have a consistent and joint understanding on how you're going to handle your finances and why you're doing and spending what you're doing and spending, the big picture kind of opens up and it's not that big of a deal anymore. So to go into that a little bit more, here's what I mean. I know I've written a lot about passive income, starting a blog, writing a book, um, networking, things like that, you know, diversifying your income in general. And one of the reasons why is because I believe that no one should rely on just one income or two incomes alone to support their life. You know, what happens if something happens to one of your spouses, one of you gets into an accident, you can't work, maternity leave, whatever the scenario is, you always want to diversify your income. It's kind of like the advice we get for stocks and investing. You never take all of your money and put it into one stock option. The people that do that, unfortunately, you have your entire future riding up and down on that, you know, stock price. If it goes up, fantastic. If it goes down, you're kind of screwed. So it's the same thing for a career. You never want to just rely on one or two sources of income. You always want to try and do a little bit on the side. So that could be, like I said, a blog, or it could be a book, or it could be podcasting, or it could be network marketing. Some of the things, though, that I'd want to recommend is to have the bigger conversation before you start picking up any side income. So why are you working for what are you doing? Are you saving for a house? Are you saving for retirement? Are you trying to pay off your student loans faster? Are you trying to have dedicated money so you could go on a vacation every year? Are you trying to get out of credit card debt? Whatever the scenario is, you want to know what's your why with your finances. And say it's all of those. Say you want to get out of credit card debt, you want to pay off your student loans, you want to finish upgrading your house or buy a new house, and you want to put in money for retirement. That's fantastic. Some of the things I would recommend doing is like I said, see about adding some passive income streams like a book or network marketing or a blog. But one of the things I want you to keep in mind when you're looking at what you're adding to your finances and to those additional streams of income is what can you do once and get paid for over and over again? And the reason why I bring that up, and I think that's more of an important topic, especially for married couples versus, you know, just saying, hey, work hard and get a part time job. You know, go wait tables or go, you know, be whatever, you know, X, Y, and Z for five to 20 hours a week. The reason why I say that is you already have only so much time to spend with your spouse. And to be honest, not all of that time is going to be quality time to begin with. So I would never, ever, ever recommend saying, okay, say out of an entire week, you get 10 or 15 solid hours with your partner that is just you guys spending quality time together, let's go ahead and take another, you know, half or third of that time of chunk, chunk of time away from your partner so you can go work on a part-time job and only get paid for the hours you're putting into it. It kind of doesn't make sense. And to be honest, you're not going to make enough money fast enough so that it can, you know, you can have that conversation and say, well, honey, just hold on a little bit longer. You know, my part-time job at seven bucks an hour is going to make us, you know, get out of student loan debt one year faster. They're not, they're not, they're not going to go for that. Hell, I'm not going for it. And I'm recommend, I'm, you know, talking about it. What I recommend though, is if you do spend five or 10 or 15 or even 20 hours on something, you know, have it be a project to where you can sell it over and over and over again. You know, and maybe that means you only do it once a year, once every quarter, once whatever, whatever your scenario is, once a month, so that you're putting out these products and you can start slowly building little different streams of income. 
So say you have a couple of things out there. So you have a Udemy course out there, you've got a ebook out there, and you've got a course on your site. Fantastic. Those are three little ways that you can get passive income. And those are three little things that are going to probably pay you out in the long run longer than a part-time job. And then the benefit is because you created this material, you can price it however you want. You can market it however you want, and you have obviously all the rights to it till the day you die, and then you can pass it on to your family or your friends or whatever, or your children if you want to later on. Another thing to think about is if you go into network marketing, okay, what's my end result? You know, am I doing this so that I have more time flexibility? Am I doing this to get out of debt? So I'm only going to do it for a short amount of time. Am I doing this to build a better life for me and my spouse? All of these are little conversations and scenarios that you need to talk about with your husband or your husband with your wife. You know, a lot of this can actually help those arguments that you may be having. I get a lot of comments and discussions with my friends and people, you know, wherever I meet them, that basically, you know, they've been married for X amount of time and they have a great relationship, but they always argue about this one subset of areas. And after we do a little bit of digging, it basically comes down to, oh, they're fighting about money. And they're fighting about money because they're both so stressed out that they don't have enough income coming in. They barely can cover the bills, let alone put any money into savings or retirement or paying stuff off faster, regardless of what they do, that, you know, if one wants to go out and buy, I don't know, a Starbucks coffee, the other one gets resentful and it starts an argument. Well, the argument's not about the Starbucks coffee. The argument's about you both have such limited income that you're going to, it's going to cause stress between you two because if something happens, one of you gets sick, a car breaks down, you know, your electricity bills more than you expect, you're screwed and you have no wiggle room and no one likes that. That's going to stress you out no matter what. So that's why I give a lot of career advice, you know. I'm always trying to push women, you know, build your career. If you're going to be in the work industry for X amount of years before you, you know, take a pause and have children, make the most of it. Ask for raises, negotiate salary increases, ask for bonuses, you know. Go get a higher paying job with your skills that you have. Maximize your time because honestly, most of the time you could get a raise if you just asked for it, or you could get a higher signing salary if you just negotiated it. It may be, you know, the start of 50 cents at one job and then the next job you have enough confidence behind you to ask for a dollar more. And then the next job you can say $2 more and then you start to get into, into the thousands or maybe you negotiate more time off so you can spend more time with your family whatever those scenarios are are but a lot of it will come back from that core discussion that you've had with your spouse of okay what are our overarching goals you know i want to be a stay-at-home mom for example i want to make sure that when i am a stay-at-home mom that i am going to be you know not causing a lot of financial strife on the family because now we're only on one income so that's a perfect scenario say that's five or ten years away for you use that time to start building ebooks or courses or any other types of products that you can sell out there so that you can continue to earn a little bit of income when you do stop working full-time or my other recommendation would be you know look into network marketing see if there's a product or service that you really like and that you can get behind so where you can start building that passive income you know a little bit little by little again so that you know maybe by building that little passive income job on the side that could either become your full-time job or it could just get you out of debt i mean for example who wouldn't want to pay off their student loans in half the time Think of not only how much stress you would remove off yourself, but how much you save in interest alone. The only other thing I would recommend if you do network marketing is that you look for a service or a product that is a renewable service or product that your customers are, are purchasing every single month or on a minimum regular basis. I wouldn't, and I'm going to call them out, and it's you know nothing against them. I just don't believe in that type of sales or that type of company, but... I wouldn't go into jewelry 
selling, for example, because honestly, there's only so many necklaces you can sell someone before they say, hey, I've got all the necklaces I want. You know, they all still work really well. You know, thanks, but no thanks, I don't want to buy anymore. Versus if you're selling a consumable product, then they've run out of that product, whatever it is, within that certain amount of time frame, and they're going to be buying from you again and again and again. So those are little things to think of when you're having that conversation with your husband. If you, you know, want to just do something part time on the side, you know, having their buy in and having them understand why you want to do all of this will make a big difference. And plus, who doesn't want to get out of debt faster? You know, I, I think it's a really important conversation to have. And in later videos, I'll get a little more into specific details as to how to have those conversations so that when you are talking to your, you know, your husband or your wife about wanting to have some type of passion project or part-time job, they can truly understand where you're coming from and you just don't, you know, have this rambling verbal dump of, hey, I want to do this, blah, 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 and there's no, you're not explaining your thought behind it, you know, if you can explain your thought behind it well, your partner can get behind you, or maybe they can even give you better suggestions, you know, maybe they say, oh, that's fantastic, you want to make an ebook, you know, that's a great idea, I love the draft that you've shown me, why don't instead you make it into a four-part series versus all at one time, that way we can get the book out faster, and so on and so forth. So you start to engage both parties into that conversation, and there goes my cat. <laughs> And then another thing to keep in mind when you're having that conversation is that you're talking about your finances, whether you realize it or not, you know, if you're going to be spending time to make a product on the side or start a network marketing business, you're talking about your finances and you can say, hey, you know, let's have some milestones, let's have some goals in there so that if I reach X amount of dollars, we do this or you know, a third of our income goes to just pay off debt for this passion project, Project X. Um, a third of it goes into savings and a third of it goes to a vacation. It's a win, win, win. You know, your husband's going to love that. So those conversations are all in the end of the day about money, about what you value. And it's about talking about your lifestyle over the long term, not just, you know, for the next six months or year, but if you want to pay off that debt faster, you know, now you're saying, okay, well, what happens when we pay off that debt? Great. We buy a bigger house. We buy a boat. We go on more vacations, whatever the scenario is, but you're doing that together. So that's why I talk a lot about finances and careers and money on my site, because to me, they're really intertwined. And when you have that strong bond together on, you know, let's have an amazing marriage and let's build those components that go into an amazing marriage, it makes a big difference. So I know I've given you a lot of ideas. I've given a lot of things that I've just kind of thrown at you. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. You can visit me at my blog at www.margaretstevens.org or if you want, post in the show notes below and let me know what you think what passion projects are you doing how are you bringing in extra income how are you paying off debt faster how are you you know managing this part of your life i'd love to hear from you bye for now